Hi, my name's Phil, I like talking about politics and in this video I'd like to discuss a little more of how the government keep talking a great deal about what changes they're bringing in with Brexit but then very quietly reversing them because they're all incredibly harmful to the country or where they would actually be useful they lack the competence to actually do it. But first if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So I've already talked about how we keep reversing our supposedly tough new immigration rules as Brexit keeps bumping its head into the walls of reality and getting a splitting headache. What were people told before Brexit? There are jobs that British people desperately want but are being kept out of the workforce by foreigners. Blooming EU, let's leave the EU, then we can all have great jobs, hurrah. So we left the EU, then we left the single market. Now we are desperately short of key workers in lots of vital sectors of our economy, including health and social care and all parts of the food supply chain, because we told many foreign workers to sod off and not come back. Shortages now, quite bad ones. But what about all those British people that, that we were told were frozen out of those jobs by foreign workers? Yeah, what about that? Why aren't they just taking these jobs up instead? Good question. It's almost as if it was all lies. So then the government had to reverse a bit of their Brexit. They issued a load of visas and added a load of jobs to their shortage occupation list, which is basically allowing you to completely circumvent the normal immigration rules in order to attract the foreign workers that they said were a problem for us. All on the quiet, of course. Conservatives are very good at knowing which bit to say loudly and which bit to say quietly. We're going to stop foreign people from just coming and taking our jobs. Instant access to the front pages of the Tory press. Right, now, let's issue a load of work visas for the foreign workers we're desperately in need of while they're distracted by something else, a cat up a tree or something. The same thing has happened to trade itself. We couldn't afford to actually implement Brexit, so we didn't. When we left the transition period a year ago, EU countries instantly put in all the necessary checks when dealing with a third country. You know, they prepared for it for some years and how the Brexit press were incensed. They were nicking our sandwiches, they wouldn't accept all our fish. What do you mean we have to wait in the third country line for passport control? But the EU citizen line is really short, I used to go there. Oh, bloody hell. No way we could apply those checks to EU trade. We'd have starved. That's no good, because the only thing Brexiteers have right now is that we're not starving. A year into Brexit, a year into Brexit, you would think that those who most publicly pushed for Brexit would be giving great speeches where they boast about all the benefits we're now enjoying. You know how a government, like a good government, when it's been in power for a certain length of time, sometimes 100 days, maybe a full year, they then give a speech where they say, we've done this and we've done this and we've done this and you've now got these benefits as a result. Where's that from the Brexiteers? Where are the speeches? Have I missed them or something? The best any of them can boast about is that we are not in actual fact starving. That proves that Brexit's a success. That's the bar for success apparently. That we are able to eat food, that we could eat food on Christmas day. No mention of the fact that a much larger percentage of it was imported. And even that was only possible because we suspended multiple rules in order to give EU businesses a competitive advantage in Britain. First, we didn't carry out checks on EU imports. Customs or standards, it's like, let it in. You know, even customs declarations, which sort of had to be done, could be deferred. So most people just didn't bother at all. In theory, they were supposed to be deferred for up to six months. Then when six months came knocking, HMRC said, right, let's chase these up. Then they went, oh, God, there's a lot of them. Uh, let's just leave it. That, was, that meant it was relatively easy to get EU food imports into the country. Second, more recently, to make sure Christmas didn't get messed up, we suspended our cabotage rules. So cabotage is basically the transport of goods inside a country, say, by the haulier of another. So in the context of Brexit, what happened before, a UK lorry driver could take a load to somewhere, let's say France. They could then deliver and pick up another load, maybe there, maybe even a different country, and take it somewhere else. And they could do a bit of a circuit. There were limitations, of course. We don't want lorry drivers getting too tired. But there were certain, but effectively they could go pick up loads and create a circuit of loads. So instead of just going back, go to one place, pick up a load, try and pick up another load for your return journey, you could sort of do a circuit do lots of deliveries and, and uh, you deliver lots of, 
you're getting a lot, small amounts of money for a lot of deliveries adds up to the, the um, profitable amount of money. An empty lorry makes no money. But now that's not allowed. The UK lorry driver is limited to two cabotage trips within each seven day period. It works both ways. That means if you are now more likely to have to have your lorry empty for longer periods of time, which means less money is being made, or more specifically, that you have to charge more for the times when your lorry is loaded. There are other aspects of Brexit that limit the loads you'd want to take as well. For example, lots of tails early on, like if you had a load of lots of different consignments, you might have hundreds of consignments on your lorry, all from different people, and one of them has paperwork that doesn't clear the customs. All the consignments are held up. And it would happen so frequently that a small consignment would hold up everything else because the small business owner hadn't got to grips with the paperwork that it soon became too much of a hassle. So small consignments now cost a lot more money to transport. But anyway, the point is that in the run-up to Christmas, the UK government suspended almost all cabotage rules for EU lorry drivers. Instead of two cabotage runs in a seven-day period, it was unlimited runs in a 14-day period. Because we didn't have enough of our own lorry drivers, so like the EU lorry drivers to go all around the country. Obviously, the EU did not do the same for UK lorry drivers. Oh, but hang on a minute. I thought the EU was desperately short of lorry drivers as well. Didn't the Express say something like it was even worse in the EU? Aren't their deliveries being knackered? How come they didn't suspend their cabotage rules to protect their Christmas? Another case of it's almost like the Brexiteers were lying. I mean, this is what happens whenever Brexit hits reality. The government have a choice. One, allow Brexit to hit reality and we suffer a drop in our living standards. Or two, we reverse the bit of Brexit that's about to hit the wall. In a few days' time, there's another wall of reality coming into view. The extra import controls being applied are going to be giving Brexit another headache. The government are going to be facing that choice again. Not that it's ever really a decision. There's a well-established flowchart, it seems to me. Brexit's about to hit reality. Question, is it politically damaging? No, do nothing and let people suffer. Or yes, it is damaging. Well, how damaging? Well, it'll cost you in the polls for a bit and then it'll go away. Right, release a story about, I don't know, champagne by the pint or something until it's gone away. Or if the response is, yeah, this is going to be very damaging. OK, reverse that bit of Brexit. But say it's temporary. Then when the Brexit mob aren't looking, extend the reversal. All very predictable, all very tedious. For example, one of the realities of the new customs arrangements coming online is that you'll have to pre-notify with the authorities. You can't just rock up with your paperwork. You've got to pre-notify that something's coming through. That will add an extra day onto the delivery times for starters. And that's if it all runs smoothly. Bear in mind that most businesses will not be fully clued up on all this and we cannot expect all customs control officers to be fully prepared either. And what's coming in January still isn't the end of it all. It's just the next stage in actually implementing Brexit. The government didn't even get through a full year with stage one of Brexit intact. They reversed whole policies in order to just about get by as the worst performing economy in the G7 and 22nd out of the 23 top ranked economies in a recent report in The Economist. Well, I can't wait till the Brexiteers pick up on that one. What's that? Well, we're not lasting something. Rejoice in the glory of Brexit. Most of us are not actually starving and we're not actually the worst performing country if you expand the list widely enough. The fact that we are having to buy more food from the EU at higher prices because of the extra transport costs, that we are paying more, well, a VAT as well on it, that we're paying more in general for our food. Next year, some of it will have imports, tariffs on as well. More on fuel, more on energy. The EU businesses and workers comply their trade in the UK with ease. But UK businesses and workers face full restrictions in the EU. That freedom of movement that Priti Patel was boasting, you thought it was for the EU people, didn't you? It was, it was for us. All that's fine, apparently, because we're not starving, or at least most of us aren't starving. But the reason we're not starving is purely and simply because we dared not actually implement Brexit on our side of the borders. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.